This is WMNF. I'm Sean Canan, and we're speaking with Michael Greshko, staff science writer and author of the National Geographic magazine's September 2021 cover story. It's called Mysteries of the Solar System. So tell us about the mysteries of the solar system. Maybe we can begin with the number of new stars that have been solar system objects, that is, that have been, um, let me start that question again. Sure. Tell, us, tell us about the, the rate of exploration and how often we're discovering new things in space. Yeah, well, first off, Sean, thanks so much for having me. I mean, we are living through a really kind of profound time in our understanding of the solar system. There are, in all likelihood, trillions of objects you know, in our solar system once you start to get down into the really small objects and the many things that are really far from the sun. But actually going out and seeing these objects, cataloging them, is really hard to do with telescopes. These objects are small, they're really distant. Uh, when WMNF first hit the airwaves in 1979, there were about 9,200 known asteroids. Uh, now there's about 1.1 million, and most of those have been found since the year 2000. So we are really riding this sort of upward exponential slope in our understanding of the bodies that make up the solar system, and we're able to actually go out and visit some of these objects in a really unprecedented new way. One of those ways is NASA's upcoming Lucy spacecraft mission in October to the Jupiter Trojans. Tell us about the Lucy spacecraft mission and how that will help us to discover what's out there. Yeah, absolutely. So the Jupiter Trojans are these two swarms of asteroids that both have orbits you know, very similar to Jupiter's. If you think about uh, looking at the solar system from overhead, like, uh, like a clock face or even like a steering wheel, Every time Jupiter is at like 12 o'clock, the Trojan swarms are at 10 and 2. Um, and these orbits are really stable, which implies that these asteroid swarms have been kind of hanging out near Jupiter, you know, for much of the solar system's history. But we haven't gone out and actually explored these objects. Really, they're kind of pinpricks of light right now. So NASA's Lucy mission will be the first mission of its kind to actually venture out into these asteroid swarms survey a diverse sample of them and really start to get new details on when uh, these objects formed, where in the solar system they originally formed and then kind of got shaken into their current orbit. And all of this should provide a lot of really rich data on how the solar system settled into its original configuration, which is really exciting for a broader understanding of how the solar system formed and how other star systems may also form. And you visited where this Lucy is, constru is being constructed in Colorado. Tell us about what that experience was like. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was amazing. You know, I've never done anything quite like that. I mean, one thing that I knew in the abstract going in, but didn't fully appreciate it until I lived it is how seriously they take the clean room environment, sort of making sure that you're not tracking in any contaminants. So I was in sort of a full head to toe, what they call a bunny suit, the sort of white uh, suit that kind of looked like what, you know, the characters in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory wear when you, you know, during that scene later in the movie, it's like Wonka vision. Um, I even had to swap out the paper I was using because they wanted me to write my notes on special paper that wouldn't shed paper fibers into the room you know, full mask and everything. Um, but it was extraordinary to, to go into this space uh, with some of the scientists who were leading the mission and to not only just appreciate sort of the engineering of the object itself, but to kind of take a moment and realize this isn't just, you know, some fancy piece of equipment. It is, but it's also something that is going to be flying on the, you know, the top of a rocket you know, in a couple years time, or at, it will, or later this year, uh, it's going to be launching and exploring the solar system. That for me was sort of a trip. I've not, you know, been with an object that's uh, then been sent to space before. So that was sort of a, uh, a surreal moment for me in a delightful way. 
I want to remind people that we're talking with Michael Greshko, staff science writer and author of National Geographic Magazine's September 2021 cover story, Mysteries of the Solar System. And National Geographic has published an, interaction, in an interactive guide, that is, of the remapped solar system on their website. So if people go to see that interactive guide to the solar system, what kind of detail will they be able to see that maybe wasn't available before? Well, I think one of the big areas that this interactive, um, I think really brings to light is how dynamic and active the solar system is as a place. You know, it's not just a bunch of objects kind of stuck in these elliptical orbits. There's, when we look out on the solar system, we can see, you know, all of this evidence of past and present dynamics. So how ancient collisions in the asteroid belt give rise to these, you know, vast sort of families of asteroids um, that we can see today. The fact that um, we can look out on objects in the outer solar system and actually infer, you know, how those objects originally formed and kind of coalesced uh, more than four and a half billion years ago in the solar system's infancy. And so that's where I think this interactive and all of the associated, you know, graphics and supplements in our, our print magazine really underscore is, is sort of the diversity of those objects and the dynamism of the solar system past and present. Um, well, Michael Greshko, before I let you go, is there anything else about the article in, in National Geographic magazine or about the interactive on the website or about this Lucy mission that you think that our listeners should know about? Well, uh, Lucy will be launching uh, no earlier than October 16th um, from Cape Canaveral in Florida. Um, so look out for that. Um, I also want to just remind listeners that you know now is a really exciting time. I mentioned earlier in our conversation that you know there's about 1.1 million known objects in the solar system. That's going to keep on going up probably by another six million or so in the next decade. So, all of the exciting advances and insights that the solar system's smallest bodies are providing us uh, is only going to, you know, keep going up. Uh, so if you want to learn more, uh, check out natgeo.com slash space um, and check out my story. Hope you like it. Well, Michael Greshko, Michael Greshko, that is. Thanks so much for coming on WMNF. I appreciate you being on. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Thanks. Take care. Thanks. You too.